After hearing gunshots outside, I waited for the first guy to show up through the door a few rooms away. I positioned myself near the right side of the archway. I leaned to the left, I aimed to the right. I was ready for this gunfight. The enemy showed up, I opened fire, he opened fire, he tried, but then he died. From here I kept looking for more weapons and I found an M416. Notice how I replaced my M16A4 with the M416 instead of replacing my UMP. That is because the M16A4 and the M416 both use 5.56 rounds. And I realized that I did not have a lot of it at that time. It was better to keep the UMP9 so that I could make use of the 9mm rounds that I had. I needed a backup. The last thing that you want is to run out of ammo. And then, what are you gonna do? So I decided to keep the UMP as my backup weapon. Just as I finished looting, I heard footsteps to my right, just like in my first fight. I leaned to the left, used the wall as cover on the right, and I managed to win this fight. I looted his body to find more 5.56mm rounds, and that made it viable to discard the weaker UMP in favor of the powerful M16A4. I made sure that I was prepared for the next fight by drinking two energy drinks to increase my movement speed and my health generation. After checking the area directly around me, I spotted the guy behind one of the pillars near the windows. I made the most of the fact that I found him first by leaning to the left and I used the pillars as cover. That prevented my enemy from immediately knowing where I was and that allowed me to deal some more damage without him being able to shoot back. I changed my position after the first set of shots to make it even harder for my enemy to even find me. Even when he did finally see me, he had lost so much health that he no longer stood a chance. I knew that the play area was going to shrink very soon, so I decided to move away from the hacienda. Once I was out in the open, I found myself under fire. I couldn't tell where the shots were coming from, so my best option was to run to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, to make it even harder for the enemy to see me in his sight. That way, I was able to survive my enemy's attack and make it to the house for some cover. By then, I already figured out where he was. I decided to relocate in order to keep him guessing. I attached my 8x scope to my M416 because it's not possible to use it on the M16A4 anymore. I was able to shoot him in the head and that was sufficient to make my fourth kill. In my enemy's point of view you can see how difficult it was to spot me from behind that hill. It seemed like he didn't even know where the shots were coming from because if he did he would have fired back. Luckily he had a car 98k so I replaced my M16A4 so that I could finally attach my 8x scope. And then I could use the M416 exclusively for close to medium range firefights. It saves time and you can increase your versatility. Plus, now we have the option to go for a one shot kill with a car 98k. I continued my journey because I was already running late. The play area had shrunk and I was outside of it. To make matters worse, an enemy just started shooting at me. Running away wasn't an option, but getting stuck in a long firefight wasn't an option either. I really needed to kill that guy as fast as possible because if I lost too much time fighting him then I would have died outside of the play area. That is why I decided to use the car 98k. He was looking me right in the eye. I was looking him in the eye. I aimed. He aimed. He shot. I shot. And he died. I was lucky enough to aim for his head and he didn't. Fatal mistake. I kept running and the med kits kept me alive until I found a van. This monstrous vehicle allowed me to get out of the red zone and back into the edge of the play area. An enemy began to shoot at me just as I left my vehicle to heal up. I didn't know exactly where I was shooting from. And he already had an angle on me, so it would have been at a disadvantage. I tried to find him on foot and fired back, but instead I decided to get back into the vehicle and to get the hell out of here. The vehicle was surprisingly durable and it allowed me to fight another day. I decided to stop the van near a hill to heal up when I heard gunfire in the distance. When I turned to see where the shots were coming from, I zoomed in with my 8x scope and I found a guy on top of a few hills. You can see that blood was gushing out of his body as he was shooting down his targets behind that hill. This meant that he was fighting somebody else. I timed my shot with the car 98k so that it would hit him just as he finished his fight. In the slow motion replay, you can see that he died when he fired his last shot at his enemy. I couldn't see this when I was playing the game, so I checked this side of the hill to make sure that nobody would come out. Once I knew that nobody was going to show up, I went back to my van and I continued my journey towards the next play area. While I was heading for Los Leones, I heard another set of gunshots in the distance. I stopped the van near the road so that I could use it as cover. 
As I peeked from the left side of the van I saw a guy crossing the road and heading for the area behind the hills. I took a few shots but I missed. I moved to the back of the van to make sure that I was taking advantage of the cover that my vehicle provided. And that's when I saw this guy. Trying to flank me the sneaky bastard. If you're going to flank somebody then don't do what this guy did. He put himself at a disadvantage when he exposed himself out in the open. He had absolutely no cover around him when he made his approach. He threw away the advantage of having an assault rifle by walking dangerously close towards me. If he was using a shotgun, what he did would have made more sense. But he had an assault rifle that was capable of long range shots. And that would have allowed him to attack me safely from a distance. He would have been able to kill me from there and then if he positioned himself at a fair distance behind me and fired from behind cover. He was under the impression that I was going to move towards the left side of the vehicle but instead I went back to the right so that I could fight one of the older tricks in the book. I made sure that the guy who got away wasn't coming back to fight anymore. After that I continued to drive to a spot just southwest of Leonis. I saw a house up ahead so I stopped my van at a safe distance away from it I then approached it from one side of the house so that it could give me some cover from anybody else who might have heard me stopping my vehicle. I spotted an enemy as I was moving towards the back of the house when the firefight began. I leaned to the right, used the wall of cover, I actually even pre-fired. The guy I was fighting abandoned his cover to walk around the fence that gave me a big enough advantage to win this firefight because he didn't stand a chance. Only 13 people remaining. I spotted another guy when I was making my way back to my beloved van. He was busy looting a nearby corpse. He ran in a zigzag line to make it harder for me to hit him. Doing this definitely allowed him to dodge my shots. But he needed to use that time to figure out where I was or to find cover. The longer he took to figure it out, the more predictable his movement became. My enemy was doing a good job at evading. But then I hit him with my sniper rifle. I switched to the M416 when he got too close. And that allowed me to grab my kill number 9. I found a few houses that I could use as cover. But soon I find myself under fire. There was a guy in the window. And he didn't like that I was coming to his place. I was not invited. I closed off the angle and he decided to run outside so that he could fight me while I was getting out of my vehicle. Luckily I gently crashed my vehicle so that I could get out faster. This extra second saved my life because it bought me enough time to kill my attacker. I decided to flank the left side of the play area as soon as I got there. I was getting close to the final circle. But I could not see anybody. And I definitely didn't see the guy who was looting the enemy he just killed. He was lying down. He saw me first. He had the chance to shoot first. Luckily, I stayed close enough to the tree so that I could use it for cover, just in case. I stepped back and I caught a glimpse of the guy on my left. He opened fire but he made one crucial mistake. He did not use his cover. Now this was not the only guy who was hunting me. If you're watching closely then you must have noticed that I lost half of my health but this guy never hit me. It was somebody else. But who was it? Thanks to the replay system we can now see who it was, we can go back in time and there you have it, it was the guy in the window, he saw me approaching, he aimed, he even waited until I was stuck in a gunfight before he took a shot but wait a minute, didn't I pull off something similar just a few minutes ago? Remember the two guys I was fighting and then I just killed the last guy standing? Was this guy trying to copy my tactics? You sneaky bastard. He must have been one of you guys. Because who else could possibly know about these secret your eyes only tactics? I had to run because I don't stand a chance against one of you guys. So I used the hills as cover so I could heal up and prepare for the final minutes of the game. I made my way to one of the nearby buildings. Here I was safe. For now. Let's bring in the top down view so that you can see how the final circle plays out. It's always interesting to see how things evolve because we never have the chance to see this. And there we are, only two enemies remaining. It was only a matter of time before I got stuck into a gunfight with at least one of them. I spotted a guy hiding inside the white building. I saw him peeking through a window and from that point on we were both aware of each other's position. I aimed at the door to the right of the house and I fired a few shots because I thought he would come out from there. I should not have fired these unnecessary shots because I gave away my position. 
I checked the window behind me and I found an enemy number two. He saw me and he opened fire. I thought I was safe, but I wasn't. I lost some health, but I had to attack. I moved to the window on the right and I managed to take him down. But I had turned my back towards my last remaining enemy. It's never a good idea to do that. But sometimes you just don't have a choice. I quickly reloaded my weapon. I turned around to the other side of the house. And that's when I saw the guy from the white building. He knew where I was because he heard my weapon. He saw me through the window. He aimed. He aimed. He shot and then, uh, and I died. He was the victor. He was the last man standing. Outplayed, outsmarted, outgunned. Congratulations, Snickers Maximus. You earned your dinner.